welcome to Business Notes. I'm your host, Diane Bogino, President of Performance Strategies at Diane Bogino Development. Our guest today is Paul Breslin. Paul is the managing partner of the Atlanta office of Horvath HTL, a global leader in hotel tourism and leisure consulting. Paul is a 30-year veteran of the hospitality industry, and as a hotel asset manager and consultant, he and his team have successfully consulted on a variety of establishments within the industry, including boutique hotels, both limited and full-service hotels, as well as luxury hotels. Paul Breslin, welcome to Business Notes, and thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. It's quite an honor. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I know you have a busy schedule, so I really appreciate you taking the time. So what I'd like for you to do to start off is if you could just give our audience a uh, overall view of who you are and what you do. Sure. Well, thank you. And thanks again for doing this. It was great to work with you for many years. And uh, I had a lot of fun with you at the Buckhead uh, uh, Business conference, I think it was called. Yeah, Buck, was Buckhead Business Association. Yes. Thank that, you. Thank that was a great program, Paul. It was a lot of fun. Well, I'm Paul Breslin. I'm the managing director of Harwath HTL here in Atlanta. And Harwath is a probably the oldest and largest hotel consulting company in the world. We have, we're really a network of firms. And my wife and I own the Atlanta office. And we specialize in asset management and hotel advisory practice for uh, developers, owners, brands, some of the, everything from the hotel next door to Caesars Entertainment. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. I've been consulting and advising hotel owners and clients for uh, 15 years now. So after wow. a long career of operating hotels. Yeah, right. So you almost know what you're doing by now, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's, right. that's right. The trick is really good people. We have about a team of 15 people and uh, we're very blessed with some incredibly smart people and just really very, very lucky. Yeah, I always thought you were good at, at hiring uh, a good team. So I Thank see you. you've kept at it. Yeah. So uh, Paul, uh, tell us who are your clients and uh, what separates you from the competition? Okay, great. So uh, I remember my first client as a consultant was a, a very dear friend of mine who owned a small hotel. Um, he sold it since, but it was, it was in um, the, the Inn and Destin Harbor. And he kept calling me wanting, he said, hey, I know you're doing development and all this other stuff, but would you mind coming down and just telling me what I need to do to make my hotel better? And uh, I thought, wow, that's, that's a really neat idea. I love helping people. And so that was my first client. Um, and he, he introduced me to two or three more. And, and then I remember R.C. Patel was probably like my second or third client. And he, he just had a plethora of hotels and needs. And he was booming like crazy. And his brother, Mike Patel, and and before you know it, I just started having um, clients. Then I stumbled upon, we were going into the, this was in 2005. So we were kind of at the peak of, of hotel development right before the crash, as you know, in 2008. And so I remember losing 12 clients in a, in a two week span and they were all hotel owners. And I said, okay, I need to diversify. And I started to create, um, market segments similar to what we'd have in a hotel of uh, whether it was architects, developers, banks, institution, large brands. And we would create, well, we, my wife and I, and then we expanded. We would create, um, what, what business can use our, our skills or expertise? And from that, it, it just let us, it didn't really change what we do and how we do it or what, what we know. But it's just that there was a different channel or a different market segment that needed us for different. So, for example, BB&T became a really big client because they had hotels that needed help to perform better. And that's what I specialized in. And so they hired me as their expert for and Synovus uh, jumped in and uh, you, you don't want to be working on Synovus accounts when BB&T they compete. But but it was a lot of fun. And then um, Marriott. Uh, called us to do some impact studies. And uh, I was really honored 
just just a variety. I remember when uh, Purdue University called me, and I was teaching at F I mean teaching at Georgia State Hotel Management, and I was an FIU grad. And I said, Purdue, what a great hotel school! I can't believe you're calling me to come be your consultant. And I became their consultant and have been their consultant, and now their asset manager for I think I'm in my ninth or tenth year, and. Um, it's just been great. And we've, we've had such a diversification. Um, last year, we did over 100 reports. Uh, we asset manage over a dozen hotels, and we have four or five in the pipeline. So it's a, quite a variety. It's a big, good question, but it's just so, I don't mean to be all over the map, but we're really blessed with a lot. Um, if I had to break it down to four buckets, I'd say asset management, consulting, expert witness work, and um, uh, reports, just doing lots of uh, strategic planning, due diligence, and things of that nature. Right. Well, that's a great story for sure. Thanks. So I know a couple of other things that set you apart uh, from the competition is your dedication to the industry uh, and also your depth of knowledge. You, you mentioned that you taught at Georgia State, but you've also trained a team in establishing a hospitality program in Turkey, right? Yes and uh, the fact that you're an expert witness, but what advice would you give to someone who's aspiring to get into the hospitality industry today? Oh, it's such a great question. That's one of my favorite things. I, I love getting calls from students or recent graduates or, or just people who are making a transition into the industry. And uh, I first and foremost tell them to follow their passion. And they, they look at me like, well, I wanna go in the hotel business. I say, yeah, but first tell me what's your passion. And when I find out like a young man, uh, Jesse Goldstein from FIU is graduating soon, uh, connected with me and he said, you know, I love aviation. And I told him the story of, of how I think you could connect uh, aviation today uh, because of the, the booming net jets and all the, the, the private jets businesses, sky, no pun intended, is skyrocketing. And, um, and how you can maybe cross that with the hotels and see how you can get involved with uh, the hotels that are, are taking care of pilots or hotels, airport hotels, or, you know, so you're kind of around aviation or, or, air, or you know, there's quite a bit of a buzz for lodging in, hotel, in airports today. So maybe, you know, so I'm a big crossroads of using the knowledge and the skills and, and your expertise but combining it with what's your passion? What do you love to do? And uh, you know, our dear friend, mutual friend Harriet, she just loved people. And, and I remember she loved cooking and so many other things, traveling. And, and she, she would combine that with the hotel business. And that, you know, yeah, I know you guys became good friends. And um, so I think sharing your, what you've done and how you've done it with people is really one of our responsibilities. Uh, you know, I love teaching the students. Uh, it really helps me to be a better consultant, but it also, it's really a give back. It's really an opportunity to, to share with the students. And now I'm in my 14th year doing that. So now I have people who were my students are now becoming my clients because they're so successful now and it's kind of cool. Um, but I, I do, uh, th that project you were talking about in Turkey was with Rixos Hotels. And I was honored to a be asked to go to, to Turkey uh, to speak. And it was all the executives of Rixos Hotels and there was translators and booths and it was quite an honor for me. And then the, there's no greater honor than for them to invite you back. And that was really cool. And, I, and they invited me back on purpose at the, the last segment of teaching their executives so I could be there for their graduation. And if you don't know Rixos Hotels, they're the, uh, the four seasons of Turkey. They're the best of the best of the, the five star, absolutely magnificent resorts and lots of, lots of fun. Wow. So, I, you know, I've been very fortunate to be involved in a lot. Great story, yeah. So how do you feel like you're helping this industry that's been so devastated oh, from this pandemic? That's so hard. Mm. You know, I don't, I think the greatest way we can help each other is to just be a positive voice, um, an empathetic ear, 
a, uh, an optimist and find a way, you know, we're really encouraged. We have uh, uh, one portfolio that we picked up during the pandemic. All, all, all uh, five hotels were failing, meaning in the market share world, they were, their RGI, their revenue growth index and their star report was below the competition and, and diminishing, declining. Well, as of yesterday, uh, four to the five are, are really doing well. Uh, the net profit is up uh, compared to their forecast. We, of course, reforecast. So they're not near their budget, but they're, they're beating their comp competitors and they're improving. We've, we've realigned them. And we did that without changing management, without doing any renovations. We just really worked with the people. We just kind of had a, a way to be very good about getting the people to be realigned. And, um, and it was fun to do that. They're really wonderful people. I don't mind sharing with you that's Driftwood, their management company, they're doing a great job. And uh, what an unbelievable owner, really supportive, even in the pandemic, even in a crisis when we needed some capital improvements and they, believe me, they did not have the money. Um, they took it out of their personal accounts to, to, to get us the, the VTAC equipment we needed, the air conditioning equipment and the roof work. And so we were really blessed with a great owner. Mm. And so I think being there at the crossroads or the, at the epicenter of, of them helping clients because they're in their hospitality people, they're serving hospitality people. And if we can be there uh, to encourage them to, to just win small victories every day, and to be optimistic that this too shall pass, uh, that I think that that will really help us be more successful as, a, as an industry. Um, uh, stay close to the people that are our leaders, American Hotel Lodging Association, Georgia Hotel Lodging, AHOA. It's so cool that they've all come together. Um, the, uh, the hospitality asset managers, the, um, the the, independent, the, the meetings, business travel association executives, the, uh, we're all kind of coming together, working together and government, you know, I don't mean to leave out government there. They're busting our butt and, you, you know, you always hear about too much government and whatever, but the people that are there are really, we on both sides of the aisle. They're both working incredibly hard for us right now. So we're very grateful for that. Yeah, that's it's good when uh, associations like that can come together and do some good. Uh, and I'm really, it warms my heart to hear the story about you working with the people and not getting rid of anyone. That's that's what I like to do is go into a company and realign people. They're, some of them are just in the wrong job. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. Um, so do you think this pandemic is going to change the future of the hospitality industry? I do. I think we're we're already better. I can tell you we've, we've gotten, uh, I think we've learned about sanitation at a higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned about um, micro uh, organisms and, and the, the transmission of, of diseases and, and how to prevent that and how to be um, more, uh, I like to, I'm going to steal a bowl out of here who works with me. He says, we're not socially distanced. We're socially responsible where what we have to be is is physically distant and socially together we have to we have to reach out because uh, it's a combination of the economic social injustice and the pandemic and and the politics all is creating such a just a convoluted challenge right now that the way to do that is to, uh, I love the term de-escalate. I mean, I think we have to de-escalate. It doesn't mean dismiss or disregard people's input. It means to truly just break it down so that we can all understand each other a little bit better. And hospitality is perfect for that. We are going to be, we're better, I can tell you right now. I know uh, from Chris Narsetta, Arnie Sorensen, uh, Jeff Bellotti, all of our leaders of the of the major hotel groups have been truly amazing, uh, um, and we're fortunate to be right next to IHG here. So we've seen their firsthand. They they've let off thousands of people, and they're just reinventing themselves every day. Um, and so I think we're going to uh, 
really look heavily at our systems, our process, our technologies, what we do, how we do it, um, our staffing, our models. Uh, you know, you in the, in the training and development world and communications world is critical um, to, you know, I think everything from artificial intelligence and how we work through AI and um, virtual reality learning today is so cool what they're doing. And uh, we, we need that because we, we, we have to train people what to do. Um, and so we need the most current ways to do that. And I think that, that our industry is gonna really grow from all of this, uh, if it doesn't kill us. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't right. mean just the pandemic, but the economic. <laughs> right. Well, I, I'm sure that the, the hospitality industry will come out better. They, uh, they are an industry that learns uh, from not only mistakes, but from uh, things that they just really have no control over uh, how to operate better. So they're yeah. good at that. I agree. I agree. Um, for any general managers that might be in the audience, what two or three priorities would you advise them to concentrate on right now? Okay, great question. People first. I, I think you must be very close with your people. And, and I remember uh, uh, that, that movie internship, you know, when, they, when they, the two guys, the older guys got into Google as an intern and they were, uh, and, and the, the person they thought was their nemesis turned out to be the one who voted for them at the very end of the movie. And um, and the reality is, is that we have to do, do our best to give everybody a chance. We really have to work really extra hard to understand everyone's situation. It doesn't mean every deal always works. It doesn't mean every employee always works out, but having the sincere and the humility to really reach to our people and, and keep your very best people. Go out of your way to do your best with your people. Uh, the second is process. I, th I think as a general manager, ask yourself, what, what's wasting my time? What process is not benefiting our guests, our employees, and our visitors? Um, what matters most? Because something's going to fall off that beautiful desk you have right behind you. Um, and, it, you know, something's not going to get done, right? So right. the question is, 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 are we prioritizing our process? And think of the things that matter most first and do those things first. Um, and then lastly is even though it's a pandemic and even though it's a critical time, don't forget about the product. And what I mean by that is go for the, uh, the root cause of a deficiency and, you know, don't forget to fix the roofs and the foundations, the things that, those things that matter most before still matter most today. And it may be, you may want to feel good by painting and doing some low hanging fruit or easy things to do, but those are probably the last things you want to do. You want to address the root cause of any product deficiencies. Um, so people first process and then those product things, but not the things that are easy, but the things that, um, matter more. Right, right. Good advice. So, Paul, tell us what drives you. Uh, my wife in the other room. She's standing <laughs> there. No, I, I've been really lucky. Uh, my dad was, my, my parents were really good. They were children of immigrants, so they came with nothing. They, they were uh, both, on both sides of the family, they came from Ireland, and they really had nothing. And so they taught us at, at a very young age work ethic you know, really work ethic. And, and that doesn't mean you neglect your education or your training or development. In fact, it means the opposite, continuous learning. I just, I'm really proud to say that I just finished six Cornell courses online and I worked my butt off. I thought, <laughs> oh my God, this is hard. Uh, but thanks to all the support from my family and from my team, I, I, you know, I passed all of them and did well. And, and learn so much and um, and a little secret that was an asset management that's what I do every day so uh, but continuous learning I think really is what drives me I think the love of people and the love of the industry all right well congratulations on passing your course I'm sure you, you did great uh, so finally Paul 
what is your passion? What do you do when you're not working? I um, believe it or not, faith and family and fun. Uh, my faith, I just believe that uh, this, we're here for a greater purpose. I have a servant heart, uh, care for others, and, um, and uh, I love, uh, we're studying right now, praying, and uh, Max Lucada's book, uh, Before Amen, we're just, uh, we'll give him a plug, we read that as our group. It's a really cool book. Um, and, you know, it's, I'm a, he says, he begins the book by saying he's a, uh, a, a, he's a poor prayer. You know, this guy's a pastor. He's written probably 30, 40 books. And he says, I'm a prayer wimp. And, uh, and he's learning to, you know, shared with us how to become a better person to pray. So my faith is really, my family's everything. Uh, every, the best part of COVID is we spent so much time as family and fun. We love sports. We love, my wife and I are very active. We get out and, and I play golf and I work out every day, just, you know, um, and we, I would say travel, but I've only traveled three times in the pandemic and I can't wait to get back out to travels. Yeah, I can imagine. So what's the best way for somebody to get a hold of you, Paul, if they want to work with you? Uh, best way is to uh, call. Yeah, my number is 770-880-4143. Or you can go to my website, which is horwathhtl.com, which is H-O-R-W-A-T-H-H-T-L.com. Or call you and they can you know how to get me. <laughs> I do know how to get you. <laughs> but Paul. I'm, I'm, I'm right here in Atlanta and we work all over the United States and uh, love, love to work with some great people. Great. Yeah. Well, you know, I always recommend you. So I hope that uh, people do call you and thank you for being on the show today. I, I know you're busy, as I said, so I, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. And thank you so much for your time. I know it's very valuable. So thank you very much. Great to see you. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Business Notes. We've been speaking with Paul Breslin, a consultant with 30 years experience in the hospitality industry. I'm your host, Diane Bogino, bringing you business ideas you can bank on. Music